So in this video, I want to briefly reflect on the language we use when talking about themes, when talking about qualitative data analysis, and specifically, as the title of the video suggests, talking about themes that emerge. So as you may know, I've said it many times in my videos on many different occasions, I don't generally like to, to talk about themes that emerge because I don't feel it's accurate and it, it accurately describes the process. Instead, I choose to talk about developing themes and constructing themes because this does reflect uh, the process. This reflects what's happening in the process. Uh, I've said also many times that partially to blame, uh, I believe, are some textbooks and generally the traditional way of teaching about qualitative, qualitative data analysis, where it is common to find these expressions uh, that themes indeed emerge. Uh, and later, as a result, I often talk to students who seem to be a bit surprised when I tell them that they don't and they have to find the themes and they have to develop the themes themselves. So I often say this when I explain uh, the process of data analysis, when I explain the process of coding and developing themes, I explain that, uh, firstly, we, we have to, as researchers, we have to systematize our data, categorize and group our data, which is what we do when we, when we code it. And uh, the purpose of this is for us to understand the data well, so that we can, uh, we can answer the research questions, so that we can develop our answers to the research questions. And based on these answers, we decide what themes we can develop from this data so that they tell the story of this data. I often use this expression, tell the story of your data. So we, based on our understanding, which again uh, develops as the result of the whole process of coding, based on that understanding of the data, we can answer the research questions. And then we're looking at the data, we're looking at the codes and then deciding which themes do I want to construct that will help me tell the story of the data that will help me communicate that story to the reader who now needs to answer, uh, to know the answers to my research question, the reader who needs to understand my data just as well as I do. So as researchers, we are essentially storytellers, but this is not to say, of course, that we make these things up because as I said, all of this has to be based on the data. So these themes are based on the data, but the thing is, if you have uh, an in-depth data, if you have long interviews, uh, if you, your approach to coding has been quite detailed as the one I usually recommend adopting, this means that you have lots of codes and you have a lot to say about the data. Sometimes ne not necessarily uh, stuff that's directly relevant to your research questions. In fact, very often it's possible to, uh, to develop a whole new uh, separate publication based on your data because there is so much of it and not everything will be 100% relevant to research questions, which means that you have some, some freedom and autonomy in what you want to choose and what you need to choose in order to communicate these findings. Again, this is the process where you decide you're in charge and you're in control of developing themes which you believe are relevant and you believe are important for the reader to understand your data. So this is how, uh, regarding the process of data analysis, this is why I feel that developing and constructing themes is a much more accurate ways, way to describe the process than themes uh, emerging. And now on to the second reason why I think, or the second justification for, for this uh, preference, for, use, uh, for choosing to talk about themes as something we develop rather than something that emerges. Before I explain what the second argument against the emerging themes is uh, just wanted to remind you quickly to have a look at my website and all the different services that I provide. These services aim to help you uh, plan, develop and implement your research study. They are mainly based on private tutorials, one-to-one -one tutorials on Zoom, but of course I have also other services including data analysis, transcription and proofreading. So again, have a look at the website and do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. So the second reason now, the second reason or the second way you can justify your choice if you decide to, to use similar terminology has to do with our one of the least favorite topics of, uh, of uh, paradigms and and philosophical worldviews and assumptions. So as you may know, usually qualitative researchers choose to uh, be believe or perceive the world as something uh, that's 
not stable, not something that's objective and, and fixed and stable and waiting to be discovered, but rather something that is flexible. So we see the world and what I mean by the world is specifically uh, the knowledge, the data that we are trying to gain access to. So I do have a separate video in which I talk about all these paradigms, worldviews, ontologies and epistemology, so feel free to watch it. But here just to a recap, provide a recap of, of these views. As I said, the world is something, uh, according to qualitative, most qualitative researchers, something that uh, we are actively co-constructing, all of us, we're constructing and co-constructing knowledge and the reality, the, the surrounding reality. This means that the researcher also, the researcher and the, the studied population, they jointly co-construct that knowledge, that reality. So if you think about that, again, this uh, seems to imply that active rather than passive involvement in, uh, in what represents that reality and our findings, namely our themes. So we're not, uh, we're not uh, uh, passively waiting for them again to emerge, but we're actively co-constructing the knowledge and we're actively constructing, developing uh, our themes. So the point I'm making here is that, that using this language when talking about themes also fits uh, the overall idea of what uh, usually uh, the qualitative researchers uh, research paradigms are. So again this will help you be consistent and argue your points more effectively in my opinion. So this is it. I hope that you learned something new from this video. If you did please like it, share it to help others find it on YouTube and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.